Good evening. This is Eugene Chan on Straight Talk. Our guest this evening is Professor Casey Chan, the former Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury from July 2007 to June 2017. Prior to that, he was Dean of Business and Management in the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. He is currently an adjunct professor and a senior advisor to the Dean at the Hong Kong UST Business School. He is also Chairman of Wheeler Bank, a virtual bank of a leading Asia fintech company. Welcome, Casey. Hi, Eugene. Uh, thank you for coming to the show. Um, it is quite an um, important time because we're going to have the budget tomorrow. <laughs> okay. And uh, as you know, Hong Kong is an open economy where international trade of goods and services are of very importance to our financial health. But look at the events of the last few years, mm. in particular with COVID. Hong Kong is virtually closed off from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And where are we right now? Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to the show. I have been watching your show and I really think you have done a great job. So it's very nice to be here. And uh, I think in this moment, uh, I think Hong Kong community is very happy about the uh, border reopening. And uh, from my perspective, I can share with you that I can see, definitely see that the traffic is coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, bankers coming back to Hong Kong to see the clients, to see the associates. We have business people from mainland uh, as well as overseas. Uh, coming to Hong Kong. I think definitely, uh, although it's still in, in, in the beginning of the reopening, uh, but definitely we are seeing the, the, you know, the traffic going back. So of course, you know, the uh, total recovery uh, will take some time because uh, there are a lot of people uh, who, are still, you know, who are still trying to figure out their next travel plan. And we hope that they would include Hong Kong in the travel plan. And actually, if you do have a chance to visit the Chelakwa Airport, I'm mean, definitely a lot more busier mm. compared to months ago, where yes. basically, mm. basically you know, deserted is mm -hmm. what to use. Mm. So where are we heading now? Since you say people coming back. Well, I think number one, I think there's some, um, I would say, uh, low hanging fruits or lower hanging fruits, uh, such as the uh, tourist spending. I think we should really try to encourage more tourists, you know, spending you know, in Hong Kong. Uh, that would be good for our retail industry, our mall, uh, the shops and so on. Uh, I think that would be achievable because Hong Kong is still a wonderful place to visit. Uh, you know, family reasons, business reasons, as well as leisure reasons. Um, now, I think the, the other part that we are doing, which is uh, the government is doing, is really trying to reposition Hong Kong as the finance and trade hub for the world. Now, of course, that will take some time because we are now rebranding, reinventing ourselves. Um, and, and that will take some time, but I think we are already, you know, having a good start on that. Right. So, Casey, um, you know that we are kind of using the normalization of our travel policies right now. Mm -hmm. um, what will be your anticipated impact of this on our economic growth? Well, it's, you know, number one, uh, you, know, tra free, you know, travel is very important. You know, we mentioned tourists. It's all, obviously, tourist spending is very important. I, I think Hong, tourism, you know, not only it accounts for a huge percent of our GDP, but actually accounts for a lot of employment. Uh, we want to see you know, the you know, hotels back, we want to see the theme parks doing business and restaurants doing business. The other part actually is more, it's less tangible, but it's really about, it's really about the business to business, human to human connection. Uh, you know, in the past three years, because of the lack of travel, uh, a lot of the you know, fund managers and finance you know, people, the bankers, you know, didn't come to Hong Kong. Mm. So you know, when you don't come to Hong Kong, you, Hong Kong will miss out on a lot of potential investment opportunities. So I definitely see that this reopening, normalization, we going out there and people coming back to Hong Kong will be good for our business, mm. will be good for deal making. Now I'll give you one example, you know, for the Relap Bank that I am you know, part of, uh, we didn't go to mainland for three years, although we have business you know, in the mainland, we have potential investment in mainland. Now, now you know, last week, actually, you know, our people started going back. Mm -hmm. And then that's a real, you know, definitely good for the business. Mm. Right, Casey, just now you mentioned that, um, actually a lot of people may not know that although tourism is our fourth pillar of mm -hmm. our industry, it only accounted for only like 5% mm -hmm. of our GDP, even yes. in good times. But you're saying that although it's only 5%, mm -hmm. it's, it's still very important. Yes. It's still very important because uh, it's, it's not a big GDP contributor, but it's a very good, uh, important contributor to the employment. Uh, and also, you know, the people, people who work in the shops, in the restaurants, they are very, you know, in the hotels, 
uh, that's, that's why it's very important period to us. Right. Now recently, Mr. El John and Yao, the Secretary for mm. Commerce, Economic and Development Bureau, predicted we are a revival of Hong Kong's economy mm. in the second half of this year. Mm. And in anticipation of our new Hello Hong Kong campaign, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kevin Young, the Secretary for Culture, Sports and Tourism, was here a couple of weeks ago and explained to us about what is the, all the campaign is all about. Mm. So, what are your thoughts on this Hello Hong Kong campaign? Is it going to do the job that we really want to see? I think, of course. I mean, tourism sector will will come back, uh, you know, on their own pace. I, I I predict the pace will be rather fast, rather than slow. Uh, because there are a lot of uh, pent-up demand for, for coming back to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But I believe the government campaign uh, of Hello Hong Kong and so on is more than about tourism. It is really more about giving the world's image about Hong Kong's, you know, quote-unquote being back to business. And that's really for attracting potential investment back to Hong Kong, uh, to get uh, corporations from abroad uh, to look at Hong Kong as a... As a uh, uh, springboard into the mainland. I think there are a lot of messages that we are actually bringing uh, to the world in our campaign. Mm -hmm. So I don't think tourism is the only beneficiary of a campaign. I see that to be more of a economy-wide campaign to to bring to bring back you know the new the new opportunities. They always use the term "seeing is believing." Yes, that's the reason why we have like half a million tickets oh, yes. inviting all the dignitaries come to Hong Kong. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And also, the government say they are they are having talks with some 100, I mean, foreign companies about expanding their work in Hong Kong by mm. 2025. Mm -hmm. That's very encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, Would you say this is a turning point for Hong Kong's businesses? Now, I think the uh, going back to talk to many companies is part of the work. I mean, you've got to do that. Okay. And I think the the, the finally, and then what is a major. Uh, uh, factor that would really benefit Hong Kong economy uh, will be uh, the the new growth opportunities that companies see in Hong Kong, in the mainland, mainly the Greater Bay Area, and in Asia. So basically, we want to position Hong, position Hong Kong to be the center for doing business in all these areas. Now, I think it's more than just telling people that Hong Kong is back. I think it's telling people. Hong Kong is back to doing what? Mm -hmm. I think we are, do, we are still continuing to be this, uh, this important hub you know, for, for, this, uh, for this region. So clearly, we'll, you know, besides the, uh, uh, the, the talk, we need to do uh, perhaps a lot more in terms of uh, uh, educating or bringing the messages more mm. clearly to the corporations. Well, Casey, I mean, let's, I mean, let's, when you have a, give it a sort of over bird's eye view of Hong mm. Kong right now, things are coming back. But let's look at our niche and, our, and the risk that we yes. have in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I mean, often people say Hong Kong is very international. Mm -hmm. And actually, how international are we? Because if I look at, I did some homework, half the business we do is with mainland, 50%, mm -hmm. and even a quarter to 30% with Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And with the, the Western world, it's only like 10 to 20%. Mm -hmm. Do you call it international, or do we have room to be even more international? Well, number one, I mean, those statistics uh, actually, uh, uh, actually talk about the, the strength of Hong Kong. Uh, because we are, you know, highly tied up to China. So that's why we do have a lot of mainland exposure presence, you know, for our business. And that is why Hong Kong is, you know, attractive to many corporations worldwide. Uh, I, I think the international part of Hong Kong is being, uh, being welcoming mm -hmm. uh, to companies around the world, whether you are in Europe, uh, Middle East, Southeast Asia, you can use Hong Kong as a hub. That's what makes Hong Kong international. Uh, of course, the, the use of English language, you know, the our, our customs, you know, you know, in Hong Kong and so on, are very uh, uh, familiar, you mm. know, to the to the foreign business. That makes Hong Kong an easy, you know, easy place to really get started. Uh, Hong Kong is still the most international city, not only in China. I think you know one of the most international cities in, 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 in Asia. Right. You know, when you were in charge in, in the government as a secretary, mm. financial services mm. so is the area that you looked at. Mm. Um, it accounts for roughly like 23% of a GDP. Yes. To say the least, it is very important. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, are we too dependent on this? You know, Eugene, I, I am one of the maybe the rare uh, finan financial service secretary who actually make the point you know, of saying that Hong Kong cannot rely on finance alone. Right. You know, I, I remember I actually made a you know, speech at the Let's Go 
on this subject. I think Hong Kong cannot just rely on finance. Finance is important, but so is technology, so mm -hmm. is uh, you know, innovation. And I think Hong Kong should really develop these new areas uh, because finance cannot grow beyond, I believe, 20% or 20-some percent. Mm -hmm. If you grow beyond that, I think that's not sustainable mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Okay, CP, before we go to the break, I want to ask you a question. This won't be an easy one to answer, mm -hmm. but hopefully you can tell the viewers because all mm -hmm. viewers are very sophisticated. They're expecting more from our guests. Mm -hmm. So you said that we have a strong fundamentals in our economy, mm -hmm. but we are facing more and more competition within our country mm -hmm. and the neighbouring city. Mm -hmm. The geopolitical tensions are at all-time high. Mm -hmm. Interest rates are going up, therefore increasing our, <laughs> in, uh, our cost of doing business. Yeah. And also we're facing significant manpower and talent shortages yes. in Hong Kong. Yes. So can our economy overcome all these challenges in short? Well, you know, these are, these are very long agenda, long items, uh, many items. But are these items, these kind of uh, uh, tasks and challenges are faced by many economies, Hong Kong not being alone. Uh, I think to, 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 the short answer is that uh, Hong Kong can overcome it. Hong Kong must overcome it. Uh, and we can talk more later on, you know, how, how, we, can, how we can do more in order mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. increase our chance of success. Right, okay, Casey, yes. let's go to a break now. And yes. viewers, do stay with us. We will be right back. Welcome back. We have been talking with Professor Casey Chan about Hong Kong's economy, our challenges and the road to recovery ahead. So Casey, in the first part, you mm -hmm. have given us a bird's eye view of what's happening. Um, people are coming back and you're confident that despite all the challenges that are listed before the first part, you said all the countries are facing mm. the same problems. Yep. So, so people, you can be more assured <laughs> we are in a, in a good position. So another thing we have noticed is during this pandemic time, you see the virtual offerings of financial services mm -hmm. has really been arguably expedited during the years of COVID yes. as people are more willing to use digital banking. Mm -hmm. And you being the chairman of WeLab, um, one of the first virtual banks in Hong Kong, maybe you can tell us mm. what has Hong Kong done right mm. or wrong in this growing area? Well, I think Hong Kong is right in terms of uh, uh, launching and championing fintech. I think Hong Kong is one of the few cities uh, in the world that actually uh, embrace this uh, development of new technology. Uh, you know, in, in terms of the virtual banking licenses or the uh, digital insurance licenses, Hong Kong is actually leading the way, you know, among many cities. Uh, I think Hong Kong now, I can, I can say that uh, Hong Kong now is a very sophisticated, efficient financial service place. You can do your financial service easily on your mobile phone, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I think that's, uh, and, and, and the costs are very, you know, reasonable. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think Hong Kong is really speaking volume mm. to uh, success of FinTech. Right, but do you think Hong Kong government can do more or the, your, your trade can do more in this? Well, we are working harder. I mean, I think uh, we, we are, we're, not, we're not saying that we just stopped there and we're already successful. I think Hong Kong can do more. Uh, I, think, I think in terms for, for us, for example, in Relap Bank, we're trying to uh, promote uh, financial, uh, manage financial products, you know, how, how we can actually distribute financial products online, digitally. Uh, of course, our, our hope is that somehow, you know, in the future, we can expand our market to, be, to outside Hong Kong, uh, including the Greater Bay Area. So there's, there's something that Hong Kong government, I'm sure they, they have in mind, uh, the agenda, but it will probably include you know, somehow expanding the, the market offerings uh, mm. for the Hong Kong financial institutions. Right, uh, Casey, while we have seen new challenger mm. in, in, in virtual banks and mm. even insurers to the market, and, but you see the traditional financial institutions also mm. have stepped up the effort. Yes. And many of those have the advantages of mm. owning a massive customer mm -hmm. base. Mm -hmm. So what challenges do these virtual banks and insurers face? Well, number one, I think that I don't see virtual, I, think, I don't think it's a single out virtual bank per se. I think virtual bank is really a part of the whole banking ecosystem. We are all part of the banking industry. Uh, each of the banks will have their, their, uh, you know, their history, their legacy, their opportunities, and their strength and weakness. Uh, the larger banks have their strength, you know, and so are the virtual banks because of the, you know, the, the nimbleness uh, mm. of the virtual banks. We can, we can bring our products faster. I hope, than the larger banks. So I, I think Hong Kong is a basically a very competitive uh, uh, ecosystem uh, you know, of banks and insurance companies. Now, if the question is, you know, uh, should we just stay in Hong Kong or should we look beyond Hong Kong market? I think for all the banks in Hong Kong as well as insurance companies in Hong Kong, everybody is trying to figure out 
what is the way to expand beyond the border. I mentioned the Greater Bay Area. Uh, in, in, in our case, we actually uh, went into a joint venture in, in Indonesia because we see how we can leverage on Hong Kong's reputation uh, and, uh, and risk management into launching a service in a very, pop, very populous, you know, uh, Southeast, Southeast Asian country. In fact, I would say that when you ask about the Hong Kong economic opportunities, I think Hong Kong really should f focus, you know, on the Southeast Asia, on the There's, there's an area countries. I want to we discuss that further yes. on, but let me ask you this first. Because when I was preparing to, to have you on the show, we mm -hmm. look at the, the makeup of Hong Kong's GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, logistics used to be very high on the list, mm -hmm. but now financial services account for like 23%, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. logistics meaning just maybe just under 20%. Mm -hmm. The next one is professional services, yep. like from 13 to 15, and mm -hmm. of course tourism I said, is 5%. Mm -hmm. That makes up about 60%. Yeah. And as you said, Hong Kong should not just rely on this alone, but mm -hmm. we are not a manufacturing-based city. Mm -hmm. How can we value add our services to others? Because I can see a, a, a great threat coming up, for example, with all the geopolitical tension. Hong Kong is basically as a middleman. Mm -hmm. If we're being sort of uh, mm -hmm. being sidelined, mm -hmm. how can we do all the things I've mentioned well? Now, number one, uh, we, we cannot be make Hong Kong because uh, being a middleman is really Hong Kong uh, destiny and personality because we are, you know, another word to say is Hong Kong is a super connector. Yeah. We're connecting, you know, mainland, and, you know, and, and the rest in, in, all, in all places. So that is our strength. And I hope that it won't change because uh, it is in how we make most of our money. I okay. mean, the 14 five-year plans have kind of reassured us yeah. on that matter. But exactly. the, my, my point is, should we be worried because that's all we have? Well, then I, in fact, I have been one to argue that we should also expand beyond you know, our traditional industry. Uh, I'm a very big, I'm a big believer in innovation and technology. Uh, innovation technology doesn't mean that you have to have big factories or a lot of engineers and so on. Because these days, you can actually be innovative, you can actually produce high value at the industry using very little amount of space. Mm -hmm. uh, you need talent, you need good amount of talent who can, who can, who can put it together. I think Hong Kong uh, is, not, is not the leader in this. Uh, I, I definitely think that Hong Kong should become a leader, uh, mm -hmm. at least in certain areas. Uh, including leveraging on the Greater Bay Area. So I'm a big believer in that. Mm -hmm. But that would not replace finance. Right. Um, just now you mentioned mm -hmm. about East Asia. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, actually the DAB was, I mean, the, the party mm -hmm. went there last mm -hmm. August and September and came back with very positive feedback from mm -hmm. those countries. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you look at the population, they're right next to our doorstep. Yes. Indonesia have 273 million people. Mm -hmm. Philippines 113, and Vietnam about 97 million, mm -hmm. or totaling about 500 million in total. It's a very high number. Mm -hmm. um, although the infrastructure is not as sophisticated as Hong mm -hmm. Kong, um, are there opportunities for Hong Kong? Are we too advanced for them for business? No, no, no. I think I think they actually can. We can actually uh, uh, find some uh, investment opportunities in these places. Uh, I think these are the areas. These are the countries where they are really growing up. They are. I would say they are a huge middle class, you know, uh, you know, in this in, in these countries, and we, when we talk about, you know, in the past, in you know, in, in, at least in Chinese development, we mm. talk about the population dividend. Right. These are the countries with young middle class and the kind of population dividend that we can expect. So maybe to Hong see. Kong should be concentrating on really developing this arm, especially think, with all the geopolitical factors. I think Hong Kong should go in there. Right. No, I think, of course, through partnership. It may be difficult for us to go in alone, but I think we should have partnership and go in these countries. And, and, with, uh, and with Greater Bay Area, it's something that we have talked about for a long time. Mm -hmm. In the past, was Pearl River Delta area. We've always been talking about that for the last 10 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. But nothing really has been, in, my, in our mm -hmm. view, is more should have been done. Mm -hmm. So with the blueprint being saying that we're going to move in with G, uh, Greater Bay Area, have you seen any um, notable bridges that has been built since all this? Well, I think you talk about bridges. I think we have m much more physical bridges that, that have been built mm. rather than, than, the, than the soft bridges. I'm talking about Meaning the soft bridges. The human to human, yes. the technology to technology. I think that's still to be built. Right. Uh, I, I have a great hope on the, uh, on the development of the uh, Hong Kong, uh, you know, the, the northern metropolis, mm. all the science uh, development area. I think that is important because there's one area where you can actually tie in the Greater Bay Area. 
uh, we have the ma manufacturing in the Greater Bay Area. Then if you have the research and then the marketing and the financing in Hong Kong, using the Northern Metropolis as a hub, mm -hmm. we can actually make that happen. That's only, to me, that's the only potential great opportunity of collaboration between the two. Okay, see the, the budget is going to come out tomorrow. Okay. Um, I'm sure a lot, a lot of it has been decided. Mm, for, for. Um, but one, one area I'm sure many viewers will share the same view that we have good reserves compared to many government. Mm. And due to COVID, I mean, it has been very expensive for us. And we also have a decreasing income from land sales. Should the government still continue on the, on the spending spree? You know, Eugene, I, 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 I never want to comment on the budget because of my past association with the budget. Yeah, but uh, in direction, why should we still <laughs> spend? Okay, now, but in terms of the uh, general area, perhaps I, I can offer my, my, my thoughts on this because right now there's a big debate in Hong Kong about whether the government should be giving money away and so on and so forth. But Let's talk about this, the actual direction. Yeah, let me put it this way. I think, the, I think, I think Hong Kong definitely need to be uh, much more prudent right. uh, in balancing the priorities. Mm. Uh, because we do have, uh, I, do, I, think, I do think that we face some economic uncertainty mm -hmm. this year, even next year. And that means that your revenue will not be as good as before. And then our expenditure has been rising you know, mm -hmm. in the past. So definitely I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't think we should, Hong Kong should be, should be uh, uh, I think we should be more frugal, right. uh, more careful. Yeah, um, you know, the government only have about 800 billion, I mean, still a lot of money yeah. of financial service reserves left, which is equivalent to 12 months of government spending. Mm -hmm. But we had, used to have 20 months of government spending, right? <laughs> yes, that's true. So let's last, ask that's your last true. question. Um, I'm sure the individual will have said, yes. right, Professor, you have told us things are looking good, um, mm -hmm. you have confidence in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And from a personal level, Hong Kong people have always been very savvy investors. Mm -hmm. What is your advice to them now? Should they hold on to the cash or they can spend and buy properties or equities or bonds or whatever? What, what is your say on that? Well, difficult for me to give investment advice. Everyone is different, right? But I think my, my own uh, investment philosophy, uh, which is a very, uh, I guess, prudent, prudent one, is that you, know, you try to be diversified. You don't, you don't want to put all the money in one asset or one market. You want to be diversified so that when, when the market goes up and down, you are not you're, 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 gain, you're gaining exposure without taking too much risk. So I would say that even though this year may, may, look, uh, may look uncertain, uh, but let me say that you know, I don't think this year is worse than any other many, many years. I think every year, even though the, the prospect is uncertain, you also bring about opportunities. Right, so thank you, Casey, and we want to thank you again for shedding some light on the complex nature of our economy for us. And we look forward to seeing how tomorrow's budget will navigate the recovery of our economy in 2023. And in fact, next week, we will have the Financial Secretary Paul Chair on the show to share that with us personally. So viewers, we hope you can join us again. Till then, have a good week and good night.